Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today, in Tube Lab number 87, we're going to take a first look at a new prototype higher powered monoblock, the GU50. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, so whenever we're working on a new prototype kit amp, the first thing we think about is what are the tubes going to be? We have some really firm criteria. The tubes have to be vintage, they have to be available, they have to sound great, and they have to be affordable. So when I found the GU50 power tube, this is a pentode. Um, in class A, you can get a clean 10 watts out of them. We're pretty close to it. Of course, you can get lots more in push-pull, but these are probably not the sexiest looking power tubes you ever saw or have seen, but they are beautifully made. They're made to a high spec. They were for mobile radio equipment. The Germans, I believe, invented the tube in the Second World War. And the Soviets copied the tube, basically. And this is a Soviet tube from, this one is from 1981. And let's just have a quick look at it. We're not gonna spend long in the details because we're gonna get into those deeper in future episodes, but a really nice heavy glass envelope We've got a good sturdy structure in here with four, yeah, four plate getters. So there's, there's four plate getters and I believe there's something else in there that's helping with the gettering as well. And the idea of course is to maintain vacuum under all conditions, right? We've got eight pins. It's a unique layout, the uh, pin out. Uh, and we'll look at the socket in just a minute. It's got a nice little top cap knob to uh, help pull the tube off. If you don't like the knob, you can just unscrew it and get rid of it or put it away. And you can actually pull off the aluminum caps and then you just have a glass envelope. I don't know, I kind of like the idea of having a knob uh, to pull this big sucker out. Of course, they were meant for helping to pull them out hot in service. Um, you know, in combat conditions. So uh, it's a, a very high spec tube. And in fact, in the Soviet Union, it wasn't used domestically because it was such an expensive tube. Now, in in Europe, particularly in Eastern Europe, in, in modern times, it has been a popular tube to make uh, amplifiers and guitar amplifiers with. And it's not surprising if you look at the spec sheet. And we're going to do that in a future episode. So, so that's our power tube. That goes right here. Let me see if I can get it to stay put. There we go. And our driver tube is the 7N7. Let's take a look at that. Another different tube. Now, this is a Loctal. Now, Loctals can be spelled L-O-K-T-A-L or L-O-C. TAL, same tube. And again, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about Loctals in future episodes. You might say, Jim, have you lost your nut? <laughs> what are you doing playing around with a dead technology? Pardon the accent. Um, and um, maybe I have, but I'm going to tell you why I'm fooling around with dead technology. Loctals were invented by Slovenia back in the 30s as an improvement for the still very young octal design. And as a result, almost all of the tubes, not all of them, but almost all of them were made by Slovenia. Who made some of the best sounding twin triodes? Slovenia. Let's take a look at this particular one. Back to back black T plates. Remind you of something? It does. The 7N7 is the loctal equivalent to the 6SN7, and this is the loctal 
equivalent to a Sylvania bad boy. In fact, the plates are identical. The difference, they would have come off the same line as the bad boy octals. The difference is it's in a shorter bottle and of course it has a different base on it, the loctal base. And of course loctal is named because the tube locks in place. And we'll do more of that in a future episode. So I've got lots of these in stock. You can still find these for reasonable money, new old stock, new in the box. And that's why we're going to use this particular tube as a driver tube. And electrically it suits what we're doing. Now let's just run through the schematic really quickly. So we've got two gain stages and the 7N7, like the 6SN7, of course is tw a twin triode. So there's two tubes in one envelope. So you can see how I dotted the halves just to indicate this. this in fact is one tube inside one glass envelope. Our signal comes in as a very low preamp signal with a nominal positive phase. We amplify it and now our signal voltage is inverted because it took the signal off the plate and it's gotten quite a bit larger. We go into the through a coupling cap into the next stage, same tube, next stage, and we have our second gain stage and now the signal has gotten quite a bit larger. It inverted again and now we go into our pentode. Pentode power tubes have a wonderful sound to them. The most famous pentode probably ever made is the EL34. Penta is five, right? So let's count them. There's a cathode. There's grid one. That's where the signal comes on. There's grid two. That's the screen. And then there's grid three. So we're up to four. And then there's a plate. That's five parts, right? So we take the signal off of the plate, it goes through an output transformer, and Bob's your uncle, you've got wonderful sound. Now, we'll go over the schematic more as the design progresses. This is version one, so it will, it will almost certainly change as I bring the circuit live. The next stage in the development of a, of a prototype kit preamp is to actually physically build one, so that Electrical circuit has been designed, at least its first draft. Now we have to find parts. We need to figure out how to do a layout. Let me show you some of the difficulties. Right away, I didn't have a socket for the GU50. In fact, this is not a common socket. So, let me see. I've got, here's a, a Soviet era mil spec socket. Now, it's pretty ugly looking, but just bear with me for a minute. I'm going to show you. The tube goes in like this. That's the key on this tube, actually. Let me get it up close so you can see it. It's just a big glass long bump. So it was designed to go into the receivers quickly, boom, press it. I'm not going to press it down because I did earlier before the shoot and I had to pry it out. It holds these two. It's meant to go off-road, mobile, um, you know, handle um, combat situations. And, and we're not going to talk any more about the mil-spec aspects of this tube. We're going to talk about what we hope will be the glorious sound. We're going to repurpose this tube from one of, of violence and um, just terrible things to one of glorious peace. And anyways, you can tell war is on my mind as it is on many people's mind these days, particularly in Western Europe. So... I brought it in because I thought, well, this is amazing. It's beautifully made, and it is. It's stamped aluminum, beautifully shaped, with a big, huge ceramic base. So my thinking was we could just cut this aluminum off and machine it flush. We just have a little tiny receiver here, and that would have really worked well, I think. Uh, but I'm not sure if I want to do that and try this in version one. We might end up building a prototype with this eventually, but... I found a new Chinese socket that's very affordable and is beautifully made. Look at this thing. It's a huge piece of ceramic, lovely pins, pin receivers, and it's keyed. You see how they've marked? Let me get it close up. It's keyed so that you can line up your glass receiver or indicator, and in you go. And I think that will look prettier. 
plus I'm pretty sure I can make a really nice recess. Let me grab a piece of aluminum plate and get it over here. You see how it'll fit? It's going to fit beautifully into a nice, if I can make a nice hole, I can get it in just perfectly. It just is slightly above the aluminum plate, which is just perfect. So I think this is what we're going to use first for a socket for our power tube. For the Lockto, that's another problem. It's got a very specialized socket. Luckily, the Chinese again make a modern equivalent. So this is the board we're going to use. And this is just a great socket. It fits perfectly actually into our standard octal um, layout of the board. So we don't have to redesign that. And the way these tubes come out, and I'll show you more in detail when we have a, a working um, amp on the bench here, is that you rock it forward on the little bump and that releases the lock at the bottom and out the tube comes. Bob's your uncle, you got it out. If you try and pry these tubes out without first releasing them, they don't come out. That's why they're called Loctals. <laughs> so, okay. We're going to do more on that later on. Okay, let's, let's clear the decks. So the next stage now, starting actually uh, later on today, is I'm going to start to lay out an aluminum top plate, a big version of this basically, and, and I'm going to start drilling holes. So I'm going to, this week I want to get my components on and start wiring up. So next Friday, you, we may, depending on if we have something interesting to show, uh, we may drop in again to see what the progress is. Okay, and of course, the hope is, is to have a much more powerful monoblock in the kit preamp lineup. 10 watts is our goal. The little, to give you an example, the little Yuri is at 2 watts RMS, and there's a revised production version that'll probably come in at 2.2 watts. And it's a glorious sounding uh, amp with efficient speakers. But if you don't have efficient speakers or um, you want to continue to run your less efficient speakers or you need lots of volume, then this is going to be your ticket. Pure Class A, 10 watts. I'm hoping for something really great sounding. Anyways, we won't know until we get the prototype built. That's the whole point of building prototypes. <laughs> now, this week, a lot of amazing tubes came in. So let me get them up for you. Let's start with quads of RFT EL34s came in. They're in great shape. They're all testing nice and strong. They all came in from Germany. And often with power tubes, the sellers don't know how to test them properly. They don't have the equipment. Um, that's why we've got a custom power tube tester and matcher that we built for, the, for our testing bench. In this case, though, the German seller knew what he was doing. The tubes were well tested and matched. So there's lots of sets in the store. Um, we've got a uh, quad in um, outside of the Wilsonton R8 sets. And we've got complete Wilsonton R8 sets that feature the um, RFT. Hang on a second. My neighbor loves to um, cut back his shrubs. So he's off making a racket next door. So we got lots of these RFT 34s. Don't be put off by the rebranding. RFT was one of the last quality EL34 manufacturers left. They were located in East Germany before the, the, um, the reunification of the two Germanys. And anybody and everybody who sold tubes at the time including Siemens, um, uh, Amperex was the brand name for Philips, of course, and RCA, G, you name it. They all would rebrand an RFT tube so that they had one available for sale because they were no longer manufacturing them. That's why there's so many bloody brand names. This is exactly the same tube. And the big thing I like about the RFT is that it's probably got the best detail of any EL34 ever made. 
It's just a lovely tube all around and they are reliable. Well, it's power tubes, that's so important. Okay, what else came in? A whole bunch of these Svetlanas. You know I love those flying or winged sea logo tubes from the 1960s. This is, in Russian it looks like it's the 6H13C, but it translates to the 6S, sorry, <laughs> 6N13S. And this is the Soviet version of the 6AS7 that's used by quite a few um, tube headphone amps. And I sell quite a few of the 6AS7s. This is a, an equivalent, a close equivalent. And they're all from the 1960s. And apparently, uh, this is the most desirable version, the early Svetlanas. You know, with the gorgeous ST shoulder type tube. Um, this is my favorite shape of a power tube. It's, it looks a little old-fashioned, but, you know, hey, um, each to his own. What else? Oh, a whole case of these little signal tubes. These are Voskhod rockets. This is a 6N1P-EV in English. Let's just open it up. It's actually fairly rare to get complete cases of boxed Soviet-era tubes intact. Um, many of them were just bulk packed loose with little dividers. So if they're in a box, that often means that they were meant for domestic use. And this is just a wonderful little signal tube. They're very simple. They would be roughly equivalent to a 12AU7, roughly. They're not the same tube, but they're sort of in that same class of a low to medium mu or gain tube that um, is a multi-purpose tube. And of course, the rocket logo tells us right away that it's Voskhod. And they made wonderful sounding small signal tubes. I would say, I would put them in the same league as Philips who were really good at making things like the 6DJ8s, the E80CCs, etc., etc. Okay, so those are in the store. And a whole bunch of these EL84 equivalents. They're actually a um, high-test version of the EL84. This is the reflector version. It's a, let me translate it here, it's the 6P... Um, I gotta look at it. 6P14P-K. Let me get that logo up for you. And these are wonderful sounding tubes. Everyone who has had inexpensive Chinese EL84s in their amps and have subbed a quad of these have said, wow, the difference was not, it was like night and day. Um, and these, these can really take the heat. In fact, if you look at them, these are all used. I got a whole bunch of them in. Finding them new is tough. I don't know why. Um, they're rare new, but um, I can still get in quite a few used ones. I sell lots of them. Um, but look at the little smoke marks where the vent holes are on the plates. That's very common on an EL84. And what I think happens is this is one of the hottest little power tubes I've ever come across. And there's always going to be little bits of residual coating, etc., when you manufacture a tube. And I think these get so darn hot that it just burns off. And that's what you're seeing on the side of the glass. It doesn't affect the tube in any way. It's just a cosmetic thing. The brand new ones, of course, don't have it. So that's a good way to, a good indicator that you've got a brand new EL84. But, you know, in a month they're going to be smoked. So what's the difference? Anyways. Those are in the store as well. Well, if you stay to the very end, I've got some discount codes to help you out. Remember, I've got flat rate shipping around the world of $20. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on me, folks. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim from Vals and More signing off. Cheers, everyone.